This is a performing songwriter and my name is Ray Naylor. My guest today is John Beecher. John is a full-time performer from New Hope, Pennsylvania. He's toured both in and out of the U.S. and has shared the stage with a number of people including Leon Russell, Cheryl Wheeler, and the Marshall Tucker Band. His music is his spiritual journey and he reaches out to touch others' spiritual journeys also. Before I talk to John, here he is singing one of his original songs here on The Performing Songwriter. This song is uh, called The Great Unknown, and it's about something I, I struggle with a little bit, stillness. And uh, living in Point Pleasant, PA right now, and I'm, I'm right in the woods, and so that's kind of what's inspired it. So. Sunlight on the river Sparkling through the trees Colors of the autumn dancing On the Indian summer breeze Sitting on an old oak log Looking at a dying day Thinking about the way I am How time keeps slipping away Everything about this heart is home Sitting in the woods here on my own Give me a river and a skipping stone My life is a ripple in the middle of the great unknown Sharp and rough. You used to think if you weren't angry, then you just didn't care enough. At times I thought my problems could be solved by forceful thinking. Just end up a man of rage who's an a-hole when he's drinking. Everything about this heart is home. Sitting in the woods here on my own. Give me River and a skipping stone. My life is a ripple in the middle of the great unknown. Ooh, yeah. The time it is relentless to take her and to give her. You get towed around and worn on down like the rocks in this old river. Teacher, and I'm beginning now to see With patience I'm a stronger man And in stillness I am free Everything about this heart is home Living in the woods here on our own Give me a river and a skipping stone My life is a ripple in the middle of the great unknown John Beecher. How are you, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Thank you very much for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure. You know, just listening to your music and reading your bio and stuff, I, that's why I added the, the sentence about it, how the, your music is your spiritual journey. That's the way I read it. it was, would you say that was an accurate reading on my part? Yeah. Um, I loved music ever since I can remember. And my mother um, was kind enough to get me a guitar and some guitar lessons when I was about 11 while she gave me her guitar. And uh, I, I just got, got into it. Uh, obsessively right away but around you know 18 years old and, and things when you start to search a little bit more for what you're gonna do with your life and things um, that's when I started to actually write songs that's when words started to come out coincidentally that's when I really started to get into Bob Dylan and things like that as well but 
it became clear that stuff was coming out of me that really wasn't me. You know, I'm, I've never been a songwriter that like crafts songs. You know, I'm, I'm more of a songwriter that um, things just come out. You know, over the years now, I've been mean, doing it for a long time. I've definitely written some songs with certain subjects in mind, um, but. I started to realize that process and, and how special it was for me. And I just kind of wanted to dedicate my life to it. And it became kind of my gateway into how I perceive the world spiritually and how I perceive God and all those things. So then come full circle around 28 years old, 10 years later, it occurred to me I hadn't really given my whole life to it. You know, I'd kind of done it in a halfway form and had never just completely surrendered. So I did that, and I was very lucky and uh, blessed to have friends and family and community. I moved, I was living in Colorado, and I moved back here, and things just started to kind of unfold, and, uh, and it's still a journey today, you know. For me, it's not so much doing music full-time as not so much about not wanting to do anything else. It's about interacting with faith on a daily basis, because as you know, as a musician, it's a constant <laughs> process of faith mm -hmm. in all oh, yeah. different ways. And when you add your financial element into that and you don't know where it's going to come from and you see the magic happen and, um, and then you feel that connection with people, um, it's really something I feel great, greatly honored to be a part of, you know. You, um, on, in your bio, you describe yourself as a blue-collar musician. What do you mean by that? Well, um, when I moved back here, you know, I was planning on having nothing to lose. I, I made a big life shift, you know, and I was kind of on my own. And quickly I fell in love uh, by accident, as that often happens. And uh, I fell in love with my fiance, uh, Laura Lee, and she was leaving for the Peace Corps in five months, and we decided to stay together. So what became just a loose thing of just figuring it out became more, uh, there became more of a pressing element of how am I going to create some money for this because I wanted to go visit her and I wanted to, you know, I kind of was pretty sure she was the one as soon as I met her. Um, so I play a lot of bars. I do events. I run a, a weekly uh, event called the Community Stage in New Hope. It started at the Stockton Inn and then we moved it to Carla's when the owner lost uh, Stockton. And very community-oriented night. It's an open mic. Um, but through the process of all this stuff, I've really learned how to you know, do Facebook and all these things that aren't really the, the glamorous parts of mm -hmm. music, but they're the necessity. And there is a, a beautiful element, too, where you can really connect people with that. And so I, I just hustle a lot, you know. I, I'm very fortunate that I get opportunities rather than having to look for them uh, at this point. Now, now I'm starting to shift into wanting to actually do more performances and travel and do those things. But for the last five years, you know, it's, it's been all me, you know, whether it's... I mean, not all me in terms of uh, I've had so much help and there's been other musicians, but in terms of like there's no management or anything like that. So, well, you're your own manager. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and graphic designer and web designer and mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah. Um, so it is like a blue collar thing where I've really learned how to deal with my gear. I've learned how to read a room and know basically maybe what I'm bringing in mm -hmm. on a on a weekly basis so that I know how to represent myself with the owner. Um, you know, there's there's different ways you can um, interact with a with a vendor or, 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 or a bar owner to make them understand the value of live music. And a lot of times we, we lose sight of that as musicians. You know, we just are there to play our music and we're not really thinking about uh, the brass tacks of why they should have music and what you can do to promote their business so they can see that it's worth it. Because then... Ultimately, for me, I just want to promote live music in general, not just me, but uh, all my peers. So connecting with people, encourage, every time a venue says they want to do live music, I take, it, res I take responsibility for making sure it works. So that way there's another opportunity for someone else, you know, and I think that's important. I think uh, a lot of people that want to play out don't realize that part of their job is a salesperson. And a good salesperson is concerned about the person that you're dealing with, whether it's a venue owner, you know, what, what is that person's needs as opposed to what your needs are. 
and I th and that's a super important part of salesmanship. Yeah, to, be, well, to be able to understand where the other person is. And, what and they treating people with respect and kindness um, to me is uh, always been the best business practice. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if I'd rather someone walk away from meeting me saying that was a really kind person than saying, uh, you know. Wow, he was a great musician. You know, uh -huh. I mean, that's way more what I'm about uh, uh, through life, and that's part of the spiritual thing. Um, also, it ties in. But you're completely right. And uh, what people don't realize, you know, you get one chance to make a first impression. So, uh, restaurant owners and bar owners and different people, they, they have a lot going on too. And you want somebody who values art too. You don't want someone who's just going to use you mm -hmm. to try to get people in the door because. There's a price range for what they want, you know, but right. you also uh, want to keep in mind that if things go sour, they'll never have, they'll have, you know, once people decide not to have music, they never have it again, yeah. you know, yeah. and then that closes the door for a lot of other people. And in this day and age, as we're watching the multi-million dollar musicians kind of teeter off, I do think that there's more opportunities for the blue collar musician, That's you know, interesting. Uh, because... Right. Almost every bar now has live music because people can't afford $80 to mm -hmm. go to a concert, you yeah, know? I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. not there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your songwriting. You know, uh, part of a good song is to have a good idea to start with. How do you come up with the ideas for your, your songs? Um, it's, they come in different ways. Uh, I write all the music first. So, like, currently on my phone, I have probably 50 song ideas uh -huh. from beginning to end that I could sing in gibberish and it would sound like a, like a fully completed song. Um, and what I've done in the past is when I do get to actually write, which is more rare these days and I'm hoping to make it more of a priority uh, coming up, but um, is I go fishing with these tunes. You know, uh -huh. I sit and I play through them and I hum and I, I wait to see if something pulls something out of me, you know. Uh, so that's one way I do it, and if, if, if something catches and, I, and an idea is there, uh, I start working on it. And then there's definitely been times when I've just been moved by something in particular, and I've had to sit down and, and, and do that and just get it out. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of the way it is. I'm, I'm working on being someone who can write uh, stories and things like that. I've always respected, you know, the way Dylan writes about people and tells stories about people. And I know so many people, but mm -hmm. I haven't figured out a way to open my heart and let those stories become songs. I think that takes a very creative process that I'm just learning how to do. And I think it also takes probably doing a lot of note taking and some things that I'm not used to. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm, I'm hoping to go a little bit more. I've, I've written a few story songs, but um, one of my dear friends and also happens to be uh, my landlord uh, and she's a mentor of mine uh, her name's Carol Lyman and she's a fantastic songwriter and she writes these story songs I don't know where she comes up with these stories the name's I mean, familiar yeah you may have met her before she's been to a lot of uh, writing workshops mm -hmm. and stuff so I'm hoping to kind of get some more advice from her on on how to pull some of these stories that are inside of me of people I've known and stretch them out, you know, to make right. a song that is palatable for people and, and, and they can understand. Now you've also done some stuff with a, a video production company called Tweed Video. Yes. And that's pretty cool, and you've written some music for, 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 for them, correct? Yeah, well, um, uh, my, one of my closest, dearest friends is a brother from another mother. <laughs> uh, is, his name is Louis Sparre, and he started Tweed just him in a video camera. He's one of the most brilliant human beings I've ever met, and a great musician too, but he started doing wedding videos, and then he started working for this guy, Danny Clinch, out of New York, who's done a lot of big uh, things, Bruce Springsteen, whatever. Then he moved to Philly and started his own business, and before I made the leap to do music full-time, uh, he was trying to get me to do it uh, as mm -hmm. my friend, and he, and he said to me, uh, John, if you come back, if you m move home and you take this jump and say, you know, because it was a lot of stuff I had to leave behind, um, he said, I will get you on your feet. I will help build you a career. And true to his word, I got here. He put me in a studio and helped me do my first album, which was more like a live demo. 
he made that uh, first video, Dance With Me, um, and just continued to help me and has always helped me. Uh, and, you know, video content is so important nowadays. So to have these beautiful videos. They, they are very nice. You know, or yeah. to get to go play. I get to play on Gene Shea's show. And to have somebody there with a camera, it changes everything. Now I don't, I don't just have to say I did it. I, I mm -hmm. actually can show people what I did. And, um, and then he started doing things with different companies, corporate stuff, and needed backing music. So that's a neat thing I've been able to do cool. recently. It's really fun because you don't have to worry about the words. You can, and you don't have to worry about the guitar. Sometimes you're just creating with all different instruments. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. Well, we're going to hear some more of your songs. Excellent. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to show a... I'm not sure if it's going to be a video or a slideshow of our next guest because who I thought I was going to have, we, we have to postpone that. Okay. So I'm not sure, as we sit here, I'm not sure who that's going to be <laughs> because I forgot to look it up. But here it is anyway, and, uh, and this will be in about, uh, about two weeks. All right. A place that we die for. Some come here the land but cannot see the shore. called action and uh, it's inspired by Dylan and by the sign of the times I wrote it a while ago and it's still very really, really relevant today I think so here it goes Attention Generation X through Generation Z Generation W controls you with TV They have kept us in the closet, they've told us where to go Well I got news for all of yous, it's time to let them know That the stuff they're doing, you know it just ain't right No time to waste, we gotta get off our butts and fight Fight, I mean a paintbrush, by fight I mean a pen To educate our children not to act this way again By fight I mean some music and words to make you feel A dedication to the truth to find out problems that are real You know, there's a future I can see There's a light outside, stars with you and me Waste of time pollutes and it corrodes the mind. We got soil, we got seed. Action is a thing we need. Attention, everybody, to the people on the street who can't afford good water or a decent meal to eat. People caught with drugs and in charge of federal crime who lost their right to vote even after doing time. You know, discrimination is a Life and well, the man in prison, sentence him to life in hell. By hell I mean no decent job, by hell I mean no pride. To strip someone of all their worth until they're numb inside. By hell I mean no education, no benefit of doubt. Just line up for your welfare check, you got no voice to shout. You know, intimidation has been spread around. Throughout the ages to keep the masses down. Oh, big government's a waste.
waste of time, greedy fools and corporate minds. We got soil, we got seed, action is a thing we need. Most people in the world, you know, we just won't live in peace. Most people in the world just want home and food to eat. Most people in the world don't want to kill, don't want to die. In fact, most people in the world, they're just like you and I. You know, it's only a few now hungry hoes that sit up on the plush, tell us what we're fighting for. have a choice cause numbers hold the loudest voice and we got soil we got seed and action is the thing we need so this tune is uh it's called Saturn Returns and when I was about 29.30, I wrote it. It's kind of just about being, uh, being, being in the moment, you know? And it ended up taking on a different life. Uh, when my father passed, it kind of became his theme song to uh, make the jump to the next, to the next phase for him. So here it goes. Castle made of flesh and bone in the tower of my mind. I am alone in a crowded room of memory, stranded and down on my knees. Well, I spread them out, floor of dreams, and how I feel. And I know the truth deep inside my heart If only that then that's where I'll start Somewhere in the distance doesn't bother me Everything I've ever done is history Now's about the only place I want to be Cause sad the fountain of you Well it springs from the well of truth In this much I
This song's a little different. Um, it's called Head of My Neck and it's kind of a funky tune. A lot of times I play this with a loop station and all this kind of crazy gear, but I'm gonna try to do it acoustic style today. Well, here we go. Open up your eye, feel hook, feel open, feel love, feel high, devour it all. Believe it's a mission to defy all lies that deceive ambition. What is and to lose if it's what you choose? You must learn to accept it even when it is the bills. Just the time you have and the tools you've been given is the only real reason to be living. Even a small action, the tiniest town can create enough for something to be spread around. So we don't complain and then stop hesitating. Too much contemplating can be people to come on. You can say what you want to say. Don't mean nothing if it ain't for free, baby. You can do what you want to do. Anytime, anywhere, it is up to you. In the morning, the sun will rise. You'll open your eyes and pretend you don't have a clue. But you can be who you want to be. You could even be free if you weren't too afraid. I said that it would have gone wrong if you weren't too afraid to. You can, you can. Step out of your suit can. Everything is fine when you step around your mind. Man, people pushing fines, could be stepping lines and don't even seem to mind when there's nothing that defines them. Full of grace when I'm up in your face. Time's a personal disgrace, yet a trait that I must embrace. I can't explain the darker things I do, but if you look the other direction, you'll find the same is true. Underneath feelings, underneath hesitation, using all I got to put my lack of motivation. Doors of opportunity opening up in waves. I won't lie, I like money, but I will not be a slave. Try hard to keep my mind in check, keep my heart in line, I keep a head on my neck. Can't explain the darker things I do, but if you look the other direction, you'll find the same is true. You can say what you want to say, but it don't mean nothing if it ain't free, baby. You can do what you want to do, anytime, anywhere, it is up to you. In the morning, the sun will rise, you'll open your eyes and pretend you don't have a clue, but you can be who you want to be. You could even be free if you weren't too afraid. I said that it would have gone wrong if you weren't too afraid. So that was a slide of some of the uh, performers that we're going to have uh, in the next uh, month or two. So I uh, hope you all can join us. Um, now that last song you did was, uh, uh, I don't know if I should call it hip hop or, or Yeah, I guess or it's, what it's would you funky, call it? it's funky. soul. Uh, it is one of the things about me as a songwriter that is difficult in terms of maybe marketing is that I'm really all over the place, uh -huh. you know. Um, but yeah, I. I kind of learned, got into Tribe Called Quest and some different groups when I was uh, in my teens, and I've always carried that with me. So I enjoy once in a while writing kind of a rap style uh -huh. song. 
Yeah, I, I don't know how you remember all those words in <laughs> such a quick, quick fashion. Well, you know, it's uh, it's an older song. I've been doing it for quite a while, but once they get in there, it's almost like you don't think about them anymore. You know. Well, you know what's what's cool about that whole idea is that you can go back to Woody Guthrie with the Talking Blues. Oh, sure, yeah. And that's just, it was another form of rap music, really. Yeah, and, and words, uh, you know, the consonants and words and things like that. With scatting and getting into that, I saw Martin Sexton when I was a kid, and that kind of changed my life, you mm -hmm. know, really. And <clears throat> um, so when I started getting into scatting, and I was in choir and stuff, and then I started to realize that, you know, words have all this uh, rhythmic possibility also, so... That's really important to me, using words to create rhythm. And Dylan really it doesn't, I mean, he gets a ton of credit, but uh, recognition. But I don't think people really think of him as a musician as often as, as they should, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of how he thinks about things rhythmically, how he fits stuff in. It's cool. Right. Now, you've written some songs that have a, a political bent in them. Yeah. Right? Um, how would you describe those songs in terms of what, what's your approach? To something that might have be like a topical song or or something with a social political foundation to it. Yeah, um, you know it's funny. They're like they there's they're songs of social justice and, and things like that. You know, I don't know that they're actually political and that they take a side other than that um, it's commentary on something that any side I think can look at and say, hey, that's true. And one of the things that I've always been passionate about is the idea of creating music that can be played on the radio that that people can enjoy and hum uh, with conscious lyrics that make people think that also you look out into an audience and you've got people from all different walks of life with something in common you know uh, that's always been a big part of my goal with music is being able to talk about divisive things but in a way that brings people together, you know. And mm -hmm. I am definitely uh, a huge Bernie guy uh, because of that reason. Uh, regardless of the politics, uh, if there's one thing that Bernie Sanders says that I really am into, it's that together we can be way stronger and figure things out. And this whole aspect of being divided up, uh, I really believe is on purpose, you know, to weaken the masses. And I, I think music and art is a big part of what needs to happen right now just to bring people together mm -hmm. you know yeah now you have a couple of recordings correct yeah is this your latest one yes that was about two years ago I, I put that one out this is called rise up yeah uh, do you have any more plans for uh, for more recording yeah um, this was an undertaking like <laughs> <laughs> oh I learned a lesson you know and it took on like a life of its own. And mm -hmm. just like anyone uh, who's ever recorded that now that, that I've done through it, they have the same thoughts. Um, I'm so proud of it and I'm so glad that I did it. Uh, I did it at Sweet Creek Studio in Ottsville. John Fischette is a incredible facilitator. Uh, he was there for me to help me produce it myself. But it wasn't like I went in there with a band, you know, it was like, the band kind of happened. So there was a lot of making stuff up on the spot. There was a lot of things. And it kind of got further away from me than uh, I intended. So it's very produced and, you know, but as my first project, I was so excited about it. But for now, I think what I'm trying to do is collect singles, certain songs and work on them. When I have enough of them, I'd like to maybe release one here, one there. Uh, the way people are digesting music this day mm -hmm. is like until I, unless I was to be on a label or something, it really doesn't make sense to me financially or uh, even promotionally to to do ten songs again in one. No, in one no, hit. exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you're if you're lucky enough to have someone in radio uh, who's helping you out, um, you know they're trying to get through so much music. They don't have time to listen to your whole album, right. so you give them a whole album, and generally they play one song anyway. So. Mm -hmm. If you can just give them one song at a time, it's just it's a lot more helpful, I think, for everybody, you know. And then you can really focus on that and and say what you want and not be kind of stretched. What would you say for the next year or so? What what, what are we going to see from you? Well, um, it was a lot to get the website done, the CD. I mean, I kind of had this plan to just 
get everything that I needed to be at ground zero so that if I was to meet somebody, a manage, manager or something, I'd at least have done my work, you know, mm -hmm. and said, hey, all, all you got to do is put me somewhere. Right. Um, and in the course of all that, my father passed away. So that kind of derailed a lot of the business part. Now I'm really just trying to get back into writing. Um, and I'd like to do some recording. And then tighten up some stuff uh, with like merch and things. And then I'd really like to travel. I would love to go to Europe. I'd love to go up and down the East Coast if I can, out West. I, that's always been my dream. And I've, I've been so blessed to be locally bound and, and have all these opportunities. But in some ways, it's kind of kept me in this small little niche. And uh, I'll never let go of that. I cherish it. Uh, I don't take it for granted. But I would like to leap from the nest a little bit now, even into Philadelphia. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I'm kind of in this tight little spot, um, which is wonderful because I can bring people from Philadelphia and come. You know, there's lots of opportunities in New Hope and Doylestown. But I'd like to travel and I'd like to uh, get some more music out there to the world, you know. If people want to learn about your music, see where you're going to be performing, how to come up to your community thing that you have every week what's the best way to do that uh, website probably uh, I, have a, I have a strange name and that uh, Beecher's usually B-E-E -E, mm -hmm. so I lucked out it's B-E-A-C-H-E-R and if you type my name into Google because of that I'm the first thing that comes up and I have a website that has all that info or you can find me on Facebook uh, Instagram Twitter all those things I, I don't know how to use Twitter I don't <laughs> think that uh, effectively but I use it here and there um, that's probably the best way, or uh, all my info will lead back to me. So if you send an email or anything like that, it's it's going to come to me, and I'll get back to you uh, personally. Okay. John Beecher. Yeah. Thank Th you so much, thank sir. You. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. It's awesome. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with uh, some someone. <laughs> someone great? Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. See you then.